Greetings, everybody. Due to the nature of time, some of the things we talk about in this podcast, like the Matryoshka Kickstarter, as happening in the future, is actually happening right now. I'll have the link posted below. Hello, everybody. This is Mark, and I am here with Daniel Letzring and Cassie Friedman, from Letterman Games, and we're here to talk about the new release, or not, I guess not new release, but new localization or publishing in North America for the game Matroshka, uh, which is about those uh, little Russian nesting dolls. Uh, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having us. Hey, Mark. Thank you for having us. I was very intrigued when I saw uh, that you guys were publishing this game. Because uh, I haven't seen any game with this with this theme about the Russian nesting dolls, which I didn't even know were called that. I just knew them as Russian nesting dolls. So uh, tell me, how did you get the... Because you're taking over just the publishing rights to the game, correct? Because it has been published before. Yeah, um, so this was published by White Goblin Games, and it's been out for a few years now. And they've actually had localization partners for it in other countries and actually previously in the U.S. as well. So another company in the U.S. originally localized it here a few years ago, but they ran a Kickstarter. And after that, I think um, the company ended up, I'm not sure if they went out of business or they stopped doing what they were doing, but it didn't have really a big life in the United States and Canadian market. And so the rights reverted back to White Goblin Games for the localization here. And so they were looking for a partner for it. And Cassie and I were looking for games to localize. And it was a good fit for us. So we took Great. that over. So tell me a bit about the game itself. How does it play? So it's a, a three to five player game. And it's mostly a trading bidding kind of game. But you're also collecting sets. So the story of the game is everyone is a Russian stacking doll collector and they've all come together to trade their dolls to try to complete their sets but to also collect sets of the same size so while you're trading throughout the game you're trying to give your opponents things they may need but you don't want to give them something too valuable in hopes of getting something that's more valuable for you in return and then you play them out on the table and tableau and you're showing off your collection throughout the game and your collection grows and grows. And at the end, you count up your points based off of how many sets you've completed and how many of the same size doll you've collected. Yeah, so I was kind of looking through the rules before uh, going on the podcast. And it's interesting in that it's a trading game, but it's a trading game with some incomplete information. Like only mm -hmm. certain information is shared, which which is something... I don't know if I've seen before in a game, which which I find interesting. Yeah, it's it's really neat because you can't. So every round, each player gets one turn offering everyone else one of the cards from their hand, but you can't trade the cards in your tableau. So you want to make sure the cards you're trading stay in your hand, but at the same time, you don't want to put all your good cards in your tableau because then everyone knows exactly what you have. But you got to give some information because you want them to kind of help you, right? Like, so you want them to trade with you and you want them to know what sets you're going for. But you don't want to know, like, exactly what cards you're going for because they definitely won't give it to you, right? It's like this fine line of give me something good but not too good. But in reality, it's really, really good, <laughs> if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that, that's super intriguing. Almost like uh, I played... I should have played earlier. I played Arboretum for the first time uh, a couple weeks ago. And that has a similar thing where you kind of want to... You want to display what you're going for without signaling what you're going for, which that's is neat. actually that's actually the second time I've heard it being similar to Arboretum. Someone else was playing with their parents, and their parents are into Arboretum, and they said, "Oh, this is just like that tree game." <laughs> so, <laughs> so I guess um, it you know it it does give that similar feeling, but that like you said, there's that hidden trading. Only part of the information is shown. Mm -hmm. And how did you come across this game in terms of partnering up to do the localization? Is it just something that you kind of stumbled upon? So I reviewed it back in 2016 for the website that I, I post my reviews on, the Indie Game Report. And I really loved the game and I wanted to share it more with the public, but I was just a reviewer, so I didn't really have any kind of power to bring it to the United States. And I kind of just set it on the shelf and forgot about it for a little while because I don't play three plus player games very often. It's difficult to do. 
And so I was thinking, I really wanted, you know, the past um, year or so, I was thinking, I really want to get into publishing, but how can I do it? And what would be the most beneficial way for me as well as interesting? And I love foreign languages and foreign cultures. And localization um, has become more commonplace for smaller publishers. It's not just larger publishers that are doing it anymore. And I thought, you know what? That might be a cool way to get my foot in the door with publishing. And I've been friends with Dan for a long time. He also does content for the Indie Game Report, which is how we uh, met. And so I approached him with the idea of Matryoshka because I've played it before and I loved it. And so I knew the game had um, good value and it really deserved more publicity, I, I guess I could say. I think more people would really enjoy the game than have heard of it. So we decided to move forward with it. And I saw, I don't remember where it was, if it was on the website or, or somewhere else, but you're actually now kind of the localization, was a localization manager or director or something for Letterman? Mm -hmm. I basically gave her an open invitation of, as long as I like the game and we think it's a good fit for the line, she can reach out to any publisher and talk about a localization prospect for really anything that she wants. And I kind of just gave her free reign of, if you want to find something and do something really cool, I'm all in as long as it's a cool game that fits our line. And uh, so, so when we found Matryoshka, we were, I think there were, it was something like seven games we had been playing within those two months. There was like two months where we were kind of screening a, a lot of games and we knew we wanted Matryoshka and we weren't sure if the rights were available. And so we actually kind of backburnered that and we're playing these other games and we're like, oh, well, none of them are as good as Matryoshka. So so then we went back to it and we approached White Goblin again. We were talking to them about four, four different games, I believe. And um, we said, you know, we like these other games, but we really think this game is a good fit. And they're like, oh, well, we can actually get the rights for that back like to you. And we said, well, if, if so, that's that's the one we want. And we just started driving forward with that one. Well, that's really interesting. So I have, I've talked to I, – I don't interview publishers a whole lot, but I've talked to a, a handful. And this is the first time I've seen someone have kind of a strategy of finding games that are already complete, already made, and just bringing them to a new audience. Is that something you guys are really going to be focusing on as a strategy, uh I guess? Well, so I guess for me, I you know I have other games that I'm looking to publish that are we're we're either creating or um you know publishing in house, and but you know we can only do so many of those a year, mm -hmm. and I don't want to stretch myself too thin, which is why when Cassie offered to come on and be a project manager for on, for these as well to take the workload off of me from like doing more games, it felt like a good fit for how she wanted to kind of work with me. And so I think we're thinking that, I'll, you know, obviously I'll still be publishing other games that we're, we're developing and bringing up through our, our company. But at the same time, if we can add a couple games a year that are localizations that, you know, she and I are really passionate about and think are good games, then we're happy to add those to the line on top of what we're already doing. Mm -hmm. And how has it been for you, Cassie, just trying to hunt down uh, interesting games out there that, that maybe don't have a... a, a or maybe aren't in print at the moment. I've been making a list and it's kind of hard to acquire them to play test. I think right. is, <laughs> has been my biggest difficulty. I actually reached out to the community recently of what's the most cost efficient way to acquire these. And I was recommended a couple of um, foreign Amazon accounts like amazon.jp for uh, Japanese games and there was another one, I think, um, Amazon.de for German games. I guess I could try getting them that way. But other than that, it's been really difficult. And a lot of the games that I'm finding that I could acquire from Amazon already have been localized. So right. there's nothing to sign. <laughs> so that's been difficulty also. Going back to the game itself, did you guys do all new art for this? Or is this the same art that was in the previous publishings? Um, so we... Took the original art that was from the the first publishing, and we adjusted the colors on them a little okay. bit. Some of the colors felt very similar between different sets. So you're collecting sets, uh, but there are only you only use so many in a game, and there's no real difference between them other than they're just different sets. They don't affect the game any differently from each other. And so some of the sets looked similar, even though they were different. And we just adjusted the colors so that that 
didn't happen on first glance. Sure. But what we also did is we're adding in a deluxe just to add more set options. Because when you play the game with certain player counts, you just use a certain number. So now if we add more in, you just have more options to choose from to include in the game when you play. Mm-hmm. So we're, we made a deluxe edition where we're going to feature four different artists, four different sets illustrated by four different artists. And just to add, a, you know, our own little flair to the game, our own touch, because other than that, we weren't changing too much of it. So we thought it would be fun to bring something new to it. And we thought four new artists would be a good way to do that. We did want to try a two player variant to incorporate in the game as a change, but that seemed to be difficult because the essence of the game is trading. And there's really not much you can do with a trade when you're trading with one person back and forth. Right. So we kind of decided to shelf that idea and hopefully after the game has had a successful kickstarter campaign and people are playing it we'll be able to come up with some non-official two-player variants but um oh, and another thing we also did was we changed dan didn't mention it but i was really excited about it we changed the it's a, not a big thing for us but it's a big thing for other people the numbers in the corners of the dolls we changed the font colors to be just white against all colors so it's a lot easier to play the game if you're Mm. colorblind and another thing we did our graphic designer michael kofer did this really amazing thing where he the original set had the same doll increased in size six times so across seven cards it's the same image just enlarged and what he did was he changed it so it looks like the dolls are nesting slowly as you get higher and higher in the cards and so it's really you know gives the theme a little bit more flavor in -hmm. the game and it was just a nice idea that he can't he just came up with out of nowhere and we were like this is amazing yes please (laughs) so (laughs) we decided to keep it in the game that's great and Mm -hmm. uh, so you'll be doing this on kickstarter when does the kickstarter launch may 8th may 8th it will be up um and what's the price point going to be for that it's going to be $16 for the base game shipped in the U.S. There's a little bit extra for Canada. And then um, $25 for the base game with the deluxe components, which are going to include the four sets that I mentioned. So mm-hmm. uh, 28 cards and then two custom screen printed meeples that are two different sizes that are going to be custom like Matryoshka doll style meeples. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah. And we thought those would Pushing be fun. Pushing meeple design. Exactly. Mm-hmm. We wanted to add something. Um, it's not hard to track, but there's a first player and then an active player on the turn, right? So the first player starts and they make a trade, but then you go around the table with the other players making trades as well. So we just thought it'd be fun to have meeples. And we're toying with some ideas that there's a cutout in the wooden meeple so that maybe they'll nest. I don't know if we're going to get it to work, but there'll at least be two varying sized nesting doll meeples, but we're we're hoping to get them to nest. So stay tuned for that. <laughs> That would be fantastic. There's one thing we need. It's it's more people pushing the limits of what a meeple can be. <laughs> <laughs> Again, this was an idea by Michael Kofer, who did the graphic design on the dolls. That's why I, I've worked with him on every project for every game I've done. And every time he just looks at it and he says, you know, what you should add to this game. And I'm always just like, yes, I, I want to hear this because <laughs> it's always just great ideas. He's so creative. Um, I call him. I tell him he's unofficially just the cr- the head of creative development for the company because he every project comes up with something cool like that, and it's amazing. Oh, that's wonderful! I love it. I think that's all the questions I had. Was there anything you guys wanted to talk about in regards to the game that we haven't covered? We can mention who our guest artists are. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the four uh, guest artists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, they're all women. Which was pretty exciting because I like to get my ladies some business. Oh, yeah. For sure. um, we went with Alicia Volkman, Jackie Davis, I believe is her last name, yes. um, Katie Grierson, and Sally Gottfried. And we're slowly releasing the images of the dolls they've created. We've released two pictures so far, and we're going to release two more, and then we're going to show what the dolls look like on cards eventually. Oh, that's so. really exciting. Are, are they, I haven't seen these yet. Are they like dramatically different styles or are they kind of fit in with what you have now? How, how, how extreme did they go with it? The, most of them, they fit in, but they look different, right? They're sure. all a little bit different in style. Katie, I'd say really pushed the envelope on how it would look and be. 
um, just in the style of the doll she did. It's not a traditional nesting doll style shape. It's really kind of cool. Um, she wanted to play with some angles and stuff. So you'll see that one. It's oh, it's neat. pretty neat. And Sally's newest one is just really neat color schemes and tones the way it's done um jackie's is just gorgeously beautiful and elegant and alicia too she, alicia does this really nice like cartoony style that's still serious and nice looking and she captured the the look on the doll and it's got this beautiful flair on the on the doll's body it's they all just did very unique in different perspectives and they all look amazing but they all look like russian nesting dolls sure but in their own style so it's just it's really cool to say just make me a, re- a nesting doll that's you can't see her arms and you can just see her face and do you and then we get these amazing pieces back and it's just been really exciting to see the cool ideas that they've come up with yeah yeah, yeah and it's a really nice idea for something to make it deluxe you know that's actually kind of special but doesn't necessarily affect the gameplay you know you get people, uh, you know, complaining that they miss out on a Kickstarter or something. They miss out like on a mini expansion. But this is just like really neat cosmetic, new art. You know, to the individual artist, I find that that I find that really nice. Yeah, we, we wanted something like I said a little earlier that was just kind of our touch on it because we didn't have a big hand in a lot of what was happening with the game in mm. itself, right? We didn't des- design or develop it. We didn't really do much of the original illustrations. And we're like, what can we add that's just a touch of our own? And we thought this, you know, featuring artists that we know and we're friends with, or we we met some new artists through this as well. And just getting them out there and showcasing some cool new art was what seemed to us the best way to have our finger on this project a little bit and do something fun and unique with it. That's great. I love it. In terms of Cassie what you're doing in in terms of finding new games is it 100 percent focusing on this one do you have stuff planned for the future i know you said you're testing certain things but i've reached out to a few foreign publishers to find out how i could acquire some of their games because i do have a list of games i want to play test and mm-hmm. see if they would you know fit really well because the lemon games line is very family friendly so if it's something that's really mechanically intense it's not going to work really well with our line so i want to make sure it's going to fit, and obviously you want to playtest something before you sign it. But it, that's been really the the difficult part. And once I start getting through my list, I'm going to be able to put things in the, I guess, in the queue, per se. But my queue is just kind of on standby. Sure, yeah. Well, uh, I know Kickstarters and new releases are a lot of hard work. Oh, this one's ahead. my first one as well, so I'm like... Oh no! So I'm just like, let me just get through this first one, make sure I don't mess anything up, and then I'll feel confident to manage the next one without needing as much. Because Dan's been doing a lot of hand holding for me. Like this is probably the next step we should do. You should reach out to this person to get this information. And so now that I'm learning all of these first steps, next time I won't need his help so much. So it will be less of not a burden, but less work for him. And I'll just be able to maybe even get two things on the you know the the stove of <laughs> game publishing <laughs> take it off the yeah. back burner on the front burner right we're keep, we're sticking and i think stuff. i, I think that's just, made right <laughs> i think so <laughs> that's right um i think that's what's been holding her back with looking too intensely at anything else for the future as well because she knows too on top of this like you know i'm, I'm doing some of this but she, i mean she's done play she's done a lot as well and uh, and she's doing a lot of the work for it but you know, when it's still something on the docket, it's you know, things I have to pay attention and work on as well. And I have a pretty big year this year. I have a lot of things planned through the end of this year. And I think she didn't want to perturb any of that or have any other localization projects get in the way of that. Um, but come next year, as of right now, I have pretty open-ish schedule for the publishing line of it. And so I think, you know, I pretty much told her starting early next year, we can just kind of go again so she was kind of waiting till we got through matryoshka because we have time and we aren't in a rush to fill any gaps or do anything like that right now and so just to prevent us from getting too you know too crazy right away, right off the bat of course yeah i do have some ideas of game styles i'd like like i'd like to because we there's no roll and write game under the letterman games line and i'd really like to find a nice roll and write game and you know just ch- stick some some games in with different mechanics that aren't in there so that's been a little bit of a challenge as well because i'm looking for some more specific things but um i'm also keeping my eyes open if something looks great it's been getting good reviews from content creators let's just let's check it out 
Yeah. Have you played uh, Let's Make a Bus Route? I've heard uh, so many good things about that. I haven't played it, though. I don't think... I think it's only been printed in Japan so far, and I got to play it a few weeks ago, and it's really good. Is it good? As a roll and write, or like card flip and write, whatever you want to call it. Oh, cool. Flip and fill or something. Like Welcome To is kind yeah. of a flip and yeah. write? similar to that, uh, but with a shared board. Ooh. Is it yeah. a co-op? No, it's competitive. Oh. It's literally... I think it's set in some section of Tokyo and you're just drawing paths for your bus route. Um, but you get penalized if you go over a segment of the board that someone else has already gone over. But mm-hmm. You're trying to coordinate picking up and dropping off people efficiently. So like you want to fill That's up fun. a certain type of passenger before you drop them all off to maximize your points. Ooh. Well, what's fun, too, is I love games like that because you can make different versions, right? Like, let's make a bus route. And you said this one's set in Tokyo. But you I could do, so. let's make a bus route Roma or something. And let's make a bus route, um, you know, oh, yeah. New York City or something like that. And, you know, feature different cities from around the world and do some cool, nice touches to them maybe that are a little different. I, I feel like that can be fun. Yeah, my first, my first thought when I got to play it at a convention was like, man, if I was a publisher... I'd be trying to get the North American rights to this. <laughs> Anyways, that's my suggestion. I just, I, I just sent you the BGG link for it, Cassie. So I saw. Could... <laughs> so uh, in terms of, you said you had a, a, a busy year this year for Letterman Games. Anything you can talk about, or is it all kind of under wraps at this point? Um, yeah, the first one I can definitely talk about, it's um, Adventure Tactics. It's And the reason that this one's a big one. So this is again about the size of like Gloomhaven style. Um, wow. So it's a yeah, it's a campaign game that has a choose-your-own-adventure-style scenario guide. It doesn't require a GM or a DM or anything to, to run it. And, um, you know, it's like a 60-page adventure guide where you have 10 fights you end up doing. Each encounter is about 45 to 60 minutes, so the fights are a little quicker, which I think is nice. But it's got over over 600 po- cards in it. And it's based off of, uh, you ever play Final Fantasy Tactics or um, mm-hmm. Fire Emblem? It's all about the job class system. Mm. So um, you start as something like maybe an archer and you have some ranged attacks that are pretty good um, in your deck. It's a, it's a deck builder. Each you, you build your deck as you go through each encounter. And then you might say, oh, well, we needed some heals. So you go to a level one cleric and you get some heals, maybe go wizard, get some fireballs. But once you've done cleric wizard, maybe you go warlock or, uh, you know, a shaman. And uh, so you unlock these other classes you can do. So it's not like random unlocking like other games do. It's more you can completely cultivate how you're job classes grow and so even if you go to these elite classes you might find out later you need to heal and after like level eight go back to level one cleric just to get some it's totally just customizable in that sense and it's it's amazing it's a miniatures game and so so there's so much involved it's a very very big project for us but it's going to be i think pretty exciting that sounds exciting wow yeah so that's the big thing we're working on and then i have another project that i'm hoping is a, a line that's kind of board game related but it's not really a board game or anything that we're hoping to launch at the end of the year um i've teased it a little bit uh we're going to do these um D inspired children's books and so i've been working with a best-selling author that i'm friends with and we've written two of six books we plan to do um we have all the art for the first one done and it's just a matter of timing just we haven't had time to move it forward because of all the other mm-hmm. projects so we're hoping soon great that's wonderful i think that's everything i i could think of to ask this this all sounds very exciting uh, again matryoshka hopefully i'm pronouncing that within the ballpark <laughs> of correct if anyone out there is russian i apologize uh, is launching on kickstarter on you said the eighth right yes on the eighth so be on the lookout for that it looks like a very neat little trading game and if you want to get the deluxe uh, version you get some sweet art from four different artists and then be on the lookout for all the other games Dan was talking about and more North American printings of games that you might not have had access to otherwise. Maybe let's make a bus route. Maybe I'll be the, I'll be the <laughs> start of this. <laughs> I want to play that game again. Uh, it, was, it was really good. But thanks for being on the podcast, both of you. Uh, this has been very fun. Thanks for listening. Uh, don't forget <laughs> to check me out at thethoughtfulgamer.com. Uh, on social media and if you enjoy the podcast rate and review it on itunes if you want to support us go to patreon.com slash the thoughtful gamer 
And if you want to look at some really fun games, look up Letterman Games. And then Cassie, what was the name of your podcast again? Or, or your website? Uh, CassieL.com. Great. Thanks mm-hmm. again for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you all again soon. Goodbye. <laughs>